the same power that is able to deliver you from demonic oppression or possession, the same power can save a nation. Do you believe that? God bless you. God bless you. We may take our seats in the presence of the Lord. Praise the Lord. Someone lost the key uh, and another one. And they all cut keys. Praise God. Uh, it, it, it's all right. I'll, I'll keep the keys. So, you lost the keys. I want you to see this lady here with the Mercedes Benz key and the other one. Uh, I think it's a Toyota key. Just see uh, our chief usher there and uh, collect your keys uh, from her. At this particular time, I'm going to ask Reverend Ru Ruben Sambo to come to the uh, podium, please. in the wonderful name of Jesus Christ. Amen. The last time I stood here in our last Rwanda shall serve service, I sounded like I was eulogizing Dr. Mumba. I will not do, I will not do uh, such a thing today. We praise the Lord for tonight. Amen. Hallelujah. I stand here tonight to perform Another very important function in the service, Zambia shall be saved, has decided that we will award a deserving Zambian that they are working with or in the lives of the individuals that they influence. In not so, so, so far a distant future, Zambia Shall Be Saved will be hosting an awards event at which such gallant men and women all over Zambia will be publicly awarded for their contributions to this process. This award in particular, the Zambia Shall Be Served Leadership and Integrity Award, will, is proposed to be given to outstanding persons who have committed their lives to the tenets of integrity and morality in the discharge of their leadership in the various roles uh, that they hold. The recipient of this award is one who has demonstrated a clear commitment to influencing a nation towards the actualization of the Declaration of Zambia as a Christian nation. Further to that, a recipient of this particular award is one who has demonstrated selflessness and care and, and has spared no effort in trying to lift the standards of the masses that are either less privileged or vulnerable. The rationale behind this award is that Zambia shall be served, as you earlier heard from Bishop Chipasha, exists to directly infuse and encourage a lifestyle of morality and integrity in a marketplace. Put differently, Zambia shall be saved 
stands for the infusion of Christ-like values in the marketplace of ideas, commerce, and business, and public service, and let me, let me even add politics. The debutant of this award is our beloved, Her Excellency, Ambassador Dr. Inonge Ndikusita Lewanika. She is a distinguished academic, an economist, rather an educationist, an educator, a champion in human rights, an advocate, and a friend of women and youth, an ambassador for excellency for Zambia, to Belgium, to the United States of America. And she has worked for UN agencies taking her to over 40 nations of the world on duty. She has read and qualified for academic distinctions up to doctoral levels. That's why she is Dr. Ndikusita, Dr. Inonga Ndikusita Lewanika. She has equally received honorary distinctions of equal measure. She has served in academic institutions. She currently is the Chancellor of the Women's University of Africa, WUN. She has served in international agencies, foreign missions, as well as church bodies. She is a diplomat, an educator, an educationist, author, a politician, who was member of parliament in our Zambian, pal uh, uh, Zambian parliament for 10 years, an international civil servant, a community and NGO activist, a public and motivational speaker, a peacemaker, and surely a woman of God. In all her work, <laughs> thank you. In all her work, Dr. Inonge has carried her distinguished faith with her. She has held the banner of salvation in Jesus Christ extremely high. She has been an ambassador of the cross of Jesus Christ. She proudly and unashamedly declares even in her resume that she is an evangelist. She is not unfamiliar to receiving awards both globally and here at home. Some of the awards she has received include the latest in 2014, here at home, the National Golden Jubilee Medal for Distinguished Service. In 2009, she received the Knight Foundation Hero, You Have Improved Girls' Lives Today, Ending Poverty Tomorrow. 2006, she received an award for the Athena International Award for Leadership and Improving the Lives of Others in Chicago, Illinois, USA. In 2003, she received an award of Human Rights Leadership in the Freedom, Freedom Magazine in Washington, D.C. in the United States. In 1990, she received an award for outstanding service to the children of the world, um, World well, United Nations Children Fund, Education Fund, UNICEF, New York, the United States of America. We are highly honored, as Zambia shall be served, that she has accepted to receive from us this award, the Zambia Shall Be Served Leadership and Integrity Award. She is deserving. As the first woman to lead a political party, not only in Zambia but in Africa, she is deserving. As a high flying leader, she is deserving. As a mother, 
if you're a mother to a woman of God, most of you know her as Pastor Mwaka Togira Yesu, who is currently in the United States, and a grandmother. She is deserving. As all this that I have read out, she has done without scandals or dents. It is not an accident when one achieves all this. One has to consciously live by standards of integrity to achieve such a high flying life. Let me invite Dr. Neva Sequila Mumba to join me up here as he presents this award to Dr. Inongo. Let me also invite Her Excellency Dr. Inonge Bikusita Lewanika to walk up together with Dr. Nevis Mumba. words directly from Dr. Nevis Mumba. who will present the award. Your Excellency, for being a great guiding light to your generation, for serving with integrity this your generation for giving your life for others and for demonstrating that one's faith is not a disadvantage, but in fact, a privilege to serve other people. I, never Sequila Mumba, present to you the Zambia Shall Be Served Leadership and Integrity Award. The award comes with a certificate which, which reads, Zambia shall be saved leadership and integrity award, hereby granted to Dr. Inonge Mbikusita Lewanika in recognition of her sacrificial contribution to the emergence of the Pentecostal charismatic movement in Zambia. She's a pioneer in infusing Christian faith and values in the marketplace of politics and diplomacy, which is in line with the Zambia shall be saved vision of infusing morality and integrity in Zambian politics. Granted May 25th, 2018, signed by yours truly. Pray for Zambia on this Africa Freedom Day. Amen. You may take your seats. But I think before you do that, let's give all the glory to the Lord Jesus. All the Thank you very much, um, Pastor Mumba. Thank you, um, Master, Master of Ceremonies. And before I go any further, I want to acknowledge the presence of the Lord. I acknowledge his uh, sovereignty, and I acknowledge his power. Glory to God. 
all the things that you have heard, it's because of the Lord. It's because of the Lord, and we give him all the glory and the praise. And thank you for the privilege and honor of serving his people. Brother Pastor Mumba, I want to thank you. And Mrs. Florence Mumba, more than words can say. I have done a lot of things by the grace of the Lord Jesus. Actually, I have been more honored outside Zambia than Zambia. So you are, I think, maybe the first one or among the few who have given me an honor in Zambia. <laughs> Pastor Mumba is a brother of mine. Uh, I knew him before I saw him. <laughs> I heard him as the Reinhard Bonke of Africa. And by the time I met him, I keep saying up today, wow, what an anointing. He is an anointed preacher, no doubt about it, my brother. <laughs> Hallelujah. We give glory and praise. I have known my brother for more than two decades. We are connected in Jesus Christ and in Eva Sanderson. Eva Sanderson and I uh, got saved when we were very young. Actually, there was a time in Zambia when the word of God was rare. Eva and I received the Lord. We didn't know what had happened to us, but we had nowhere to go for help. The teachers didn't know about being born again. The teachers didn't know about salvation. And we went to a mission school where we prayed every day, sometimes two or three. We just knew that something had happened to us. So the two of us, Eva and I, used to pray together. We thank God that in this day and age, the word of God is no longer rare. I am also connected with my brother in politics. We are followers of Jesus Christ first before politics. As we follow him, he's the one who has led us into politics. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. In accepting this award, I want to present you with some questions, which I'll try to answer for myself, but the time does not allow for me to tell you everything. As you can see, I'm not as young as I used to be. And the questions are, who are you? Who are you? When you go home, ask yourself those questions. Who are you? Where are you going? Where are you going? Whose footprints are you following? Whose footprints are you following? And are you leaving footprints for the next generation to follow? Who are you? Where are you going? Which footprints are you following? And are you leaving footprints for the next generation? I'll start by answering that myself. First of all, let me tell you who I am. I belong to the Lord Jesus Christ without shame. I'm not ashamed of the gospel. I am born again, spirit-filled baptized in the Holy Ghost, and waiting for the trumpet to sound. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Brothers and sisters, let me just remind you, sometimes we forget that the trumpet is going to sound. Whatever we are doing, we need to be ready for the trumpet. When I finished active politics in 2001, I called all my campaign managers, all the young people who were following me, my crowd and constituents. This is what I told them. Even if you see me running around like this, campaigning, going to parliament, I am waiting for the trumpet to sound. This is not it. There's more to come. Hallelujah. That is who I am. Who I am, I belong to the Lord Jesus Christ, God the Father, God the Son, the, the Holy Spirit. But I was still born through the human beings. I come from my father and my mother. I know their names. I know their villages. I know their inheritance. And I'm following their footprints. And that's why I'm asking you, who are you and whose footprints are you following? 
I thank God for my parents. Actually, my grandfather is the one who received the missionaries in the territory we call Zambia today in 1885. And my father's brother started the first school in the country we call Zambia today in Watile. <laughs> my father translated the Bible in Silozi in 1937 after spending some time in the Holy Land. My mother was a pioneer educator, a loving mother, but a serious disciplinarian, I tell you. She used to beat as long as it was necessary. <laughs> but I thank God. My spiritual heritage is that my parents prayed and read the Bible, and they took us to Sunday school. One of the most amazing things that puzzled me as a young girl was to see my father on his knees. He was a big man, six feet two, huge and a prince. And it puzzled me, who is this being that my father can bow to? That's a footprint that I have followed. <laughs> you remember in the Bible, when Isaac went back to his father's land, he went to dig the wells that his father Abraham had dug. He knew where the wells were. He even knew the names of the wells. And I want to ask you, who are you? And where do you come from? Who are your parents? Are you able to go back to the world your parents and grandparents dug? Do you know their names? I meet so many Zambians who are proud. Where do you come from? Ah, Kalulush. Eh, Chawama. They have never been to their village. They don't know who their parents are. You know, even the Bible, if you look at it again, people were introduced. This is in so-and-so. The son of so-and-so. The mother's name. The father's name of this clan. You've got to know who you are. Otherwise, you are floating. You, will, you are not going anywhere. Don't be ashamed of your heritage. Even if you were born in neighboring countries, it's okay. We are one. <laughs> so I encourage you to know the wells your parents and grandparents dug, their names, and if necessary, go and dig them again. One footprint that I know is land. You know land is our biggest resource. That's our investment bank. In the traditional life, people were given land to work it. They were imitating the, fruit, the footprint of God who gave Adam land and a garden. We were not born just to beg. We were born to work until the land and tender it. Land. A few years ago, I was in Seattle, and you know, these days people find out, they just go and Google. And these people found out that it was my birthday. So when I arrived in Seattle, they sang birthday, happy birthday for me, they gave me a cake, and then an old man gave me a piece of soil, which I still have. And the old man told me, you African, take care of your soil and land, because God is not making any more soil. This is an old American. When we were born, we found land. And we need to ask ourselves, why did we find land? The mothers knew it was an investment to take care of so that we can pass on to our generation. What footprints are we following? Because we see strange things happening now of people selling their land, selling their houses, selling everything in sight. What footprints are they following? Another footprint is cleanliness. You know, many people think cleanliness comes from Europe. It's not true. I have been to India where I have really seen poverty that you lose your dignity. African people are clean, even in the village. Clean. That's the heritage. That's the footprint we know. I grew up in Kitwe, and my mother was very strict. If there's no rubbish pit around, and you have uh, an orange peel, a banana peel, a piece of paper, you hold it until you come to a rubbish pit. My mother is dead. I'm still afraid of throwing papers around. 
So what footprints are you leaving and what footprints? The other footprint is time. We hear a lot of people talking about African time. I keep repeating, there's no such thing as African time. There's only God's time. A minute is a minute, and it is precious. If you don't use your minute, you are going down the hill. We hear many people say we are Africans. We are also Africans. The footprints we are following, they kept time. But what footprints are you, are you leaving? The last one is excellence. You know, for us who grew up some years ago, we are just so shocked at how comfortable most of our people are with mediocrity. Maybe the people who don't know Jesus can afford to be mediocres. We serve a Lord of excellence. Daniel is our model. We shine wherever we are through the power of the Holy, of the Holy Spirit. You know, Daniel didn't go around saying, praise the Lord, hallelujah, or listening to Christian, a radio Christian voice. He just did his work. I have been shocked at some of the government offices. You find somebody at the switchboard listening to radio Christian voice. And the phone is ringing. They don't answer. Daniel should be our mode. Whatever we say, we think, we do, wherever we are, we should shine in excellence. Thank you very much. About excellence. So wherever Christians are, we should shine. Hallelujah. No, no dirty things, no what. Do your job so you can excel. We thank God for our people and our nation. Let's pray. Our Father and our God, we bow before you. We worship your name. We praise you. We exalt you. Father, we thank you for our nation. We thank you for our people, every province, every district. We thank you for our history. We thank you for Ebenezer, how you have brought us thus far. Father, we, we have really forsaken your ways. We say it in word, but not in action. Wherever we are, whatever we are doing, in our marriages, in our families at work, there is no evidence that we are followers of Jesus Christ. Lord, forgive us. Help us not to be hearers of the word only, but doers. Help us, our lives, our word, our speech to testify so that people can come to Jesus Christ just because of how we live, how we talk, what we say, how we do things, how we greet other people, how we take care of other people. Lord, here we are. We want to recommit ourselves and dedicate ourselves that wherever we are, we shall shine. We shall shine as citizens. We shall shine as wives, we shall shine as husbands, we shall shine as mothers, we shall shine as fathers, we shall shine as grandparents, we shall shine as cooks and chefs and cleaners, truck drivers, bus drivers, whatever. Lord, help us to shine for you. Help us not to take your name in vain. Help us not to throw dirt on your name. We pray for this nation for every single Zambian, wherever they are. And help us who are said that we are followers of Jesus. Forgive us because at times we have discouraged even people to be followers of Jesus because of the lives we live and how we do everything else. Lord, we commit ourselves to you. As we pray for every child, every man, every woman, particularly the young people. Father, in the Bible, you did exploits with young people, the Esthers, the Miriams, the Ruths, the Daniels, the Josephs. Do it even in our generation to these young people. Then let them do exploits for you and let Zambia and Africa rise. Father, we pray for our leaders at every level, in the village, community level, 
traditional leaders, government leaders, we bring them to you. And our prayer to you, Father, is give us leaders after your own heart. Give us leaders full of integrity. And give us leaders who are skillful in leading. Lead, leaders who are committed to justice and righteousness for everybody. Holy Spirit, we thank you because you pray on our behalf with groanings that cannot be uttered. We are groaning because Zambia has been left behind. The people we helped to liberate have gone far ahead of us. Father, here we are. Holy Spirit, pray on our behalf so that Zambia and Zambian people can shine again. We ask and we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Let me invite the Victory Choir to give us a song before I invite. Hallelujah. There's such a sweet presence of the Holy Spirit in the house. Hallelujah. You may take your seats. As I come into your praises, past the gates of praise, into your sanctuary, till we're standing face to face. I look upon your countenance, I see the fullness of your grace. I can only bow down.
As we lift your holy name, you deserve the glory and the honor. Lord, we lift our hands in worship as we lift your holy name for you.
praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise, thank you, thank you, choir. You may be seated. Praise God. Amen. I recognize in this place tonight a lot of men of God, and I am not sure that I will have the time to go through every name as I look around, but I want to welcome all of you in the name of Jesus. You are welcome to Zambia Shabbat Self Service. I also recognize men and women in this place that have served our government, have served in, in, in at various levels in different at different times in our government, people who have been in cabinet, people who have been in the civil service. We welcome you and God bless you. I want to take special notice of our friend and colleague. The Honorable GBN, Dr. Walia Mwamba. We are honored that you are here, sir. It is my high honor to invite to the pulpit this evening God's servant, as uh, Dr. Inonga said, an anointed man, a man with a voice. I really don't need to introduce him. But let me ask you to be upstanding as I welcome Dr. Nevis Sequila Mumba to the pulpit. Come on, give the Lord a big hand of praise tonight. Give the Lord a big hand of praise. And now, Heavenly Father, we look to you tonight. Open the windows of heaven. Let the rain of the Holy Spirit descend upon us. On this day, the Africa Freedom Day, in which we present our continent before you with confidence that, Lord, tomorrow will be better than yesterday for our continent. We ask of you now to touch these lips of clay as I endeavor to break the bread of life. Touch us, change us, and change our nation. We ask it in Jesus' name. And all of God's people shouted amen. All of God's people shouted a big amen. You may be seated in God's holy presence. What an awesome opportunity to be back here at Government Complex. Today, the nation and Africa celebrates the Africa Freedom Day. And in the next few minutes, I'll be dedicating the short message that I'm going to preach to my great continent of Africa. And because Zambia is part of that Africa, is going to also be dealt with in the same sermon. So I think that tonight is a brilliant, brilliant opportunity for us to call on God. Before I just acknowledge a few people here tonight, for some reason tonight, I feel like what God has been saying to me all this week is speak only captive shall be broken. It will be a rough night for the enemy tonight. And I want you to join me, if there are intercessors here towards the end of my message, I'm going to call you to join me in breaking stuff. You know, have you ever heard your father say, Akula ndafiende umfwa? If your father can hear you, then you've got your problems taken care of. The way I feel tonight is like God is listening. Some of you go kubaloshi with more faith than you come to church. You go with the white chickens with confidence that in Dewe Here tonight, I feel there is a spiritual unraveling that is going to take place because our God shall hear us. I know you don't believe it, some of you, but we'll come to that in a few minutes. I would like to acknowledge tonight, obviously, to thank all of you for coming out. It's been a difficult day, a lot of people tired, and we need to let you go home as quickly as possible. 
It's the Africa Day, and a lot of you have been involved in various programs. And I know a lot of people who had wanted to be here tonight because of the nature of the day were sending in their apologies. But God is here. I want to acknowledge my dear wife, Florence, who is here with me tonight. Are you going to stand? Please give the Lord a hand for my dear wife, Florence, who's the preacher of the gospel. She graduated from the same Bible school I graduated from. And in any case, you remember that time that I was visiting um, Mwembeshi uh, International Hotel? Uh, there was an anxiety in the Zambia Shall Be Saved team as to what was going to happen for the service. And when I was there in the hotel at Mwembeshi, I was fully comfortable that in case I will be required to be in this five-star hotel any longer, Florence was going to do a great job to preach. The only challenge is that if you think I'm radical, you don't know what she has up her sleeve. So let's keep her in the pews until we are all ready for her type of ministry. I'm very proud of our calling and ministry in the Lord. I also, of course, acknowledge our honored guest tonight, Dr. Inongem Bikustalewanika. What a wonderful testimony and ministry tonight. God bless you. We love you. We truly love you. There are not many of you. There are not many of you. I know that some of them have already been introduced. My dear brother and friend, of course, has been introduced, but I can't just go without introducing uh, Dr. GBM. Not only is he vice president of UPND, but he is also former minister of defense. It was the man. Thank you so much for honoring us with your presence. Thank you so much. I have also seen your deputy secretary general somewhere here. Uh, where is he? He's okay. I saw him come through. But I also want to acknowledge, of course, uh, Bishop Ruben Sambo, who is the uh, Vice President of the MMD, who was here uh, leading us. Uh, Bishop Tobolo, the Bishop for the Victory Bible Churches in Zambia. Where are you, Bishop Tobolo? All the way from Kasama to come and be with us tonight. Thank you so much. Bishop Mwinga, where are you? There you are. Your hair is turning gray. I'm sorry about that. But please give the Lord a big hand for my dear friend, Bishop Mwinga. Madam Winnie Zalomis, the chairman of the MMD, please stand up and give her a big hand tonight. We also have Madam Elizabeth Honorable Chitika, the national secretary for the MMD, give her a big hand. We do have Madam Maggie Mulela, who is our tourism chairperson for MMD, and the husband, the former minister, deputy minister of foreign affairs, Mr. Mulela. Thank you. You may be seated in God's presence. We do have, I'm going quickly so that we can move on uh, tonight. We have all the bishops that are here. I've seen um, several of you. Last time, I forgot to introduce a lot of people, and I received phone calls of distress that how can you introduce them, and you didn't introduce me. So today, I introduce you. Okay? You are introduced. Apostle Kunda, is that you there? God bless you. God bless you. You know, when the name is not on the list, I'm not very good. Pastor Sidney, I'm glad to see you from Kawe. Uh, Pastor Nephas and all the men of God. But let me also introduce my two um, right-hand men here, and three actually. Uh, Pastor Denson Chipasha is a, actually a co-founder of Victory Ministries. We started the ministry together. And uh, we both lost our hair. Stand up, Pastor Chipasha. Give the Lord a big hand. Next to him is Pastor Cyrus, who has taken over the church I used to pastor in Kitwe, and is the secretary for the governing council of Victory. And next to him, of course, is uh, Pastor Ebotosi, the pastor of our Victory Bible Church in Woodlands, Lusaka. Stand up. You are not that tall. That's good. Now they can see you. Thank you so much. And, of course, there are many, many other pastors that I can't see from this place. The way it is, the light hits you here, you don't see there. So you can see me better than I can. But I also want to take this opportunity to acknowledge my family. My elder brother is here. And my young brother is here, the last born in our family. I'm number 11. 
And uh, where she can go, let me start with the number. Let me start with Yakwa. That is Mr. Hastings Mumba, my elder brother, a Zambia Air Force retiree. <laughs> Thank you so much. My young brother is here as well. I saw him, Marcus Mumba. He comes immediately after me. And so he is the 12th born and the 11th born. So he's still here. And I also want to take this opportunity to thank the Zambia Shall Be Safe team for the work you have done. The uh, Musupila, uh, is that uh, Pastor Musupila? It's good to see you there. Was that Rachel? But you should have stood up when the husband stood up. How could you stand up without Rachel? And um, Sister Ruth, the intercessor, was prayed for me ever since I started ministry. Stand up, the three of you, and please give them a big hand. <laughs> the former president of Zufiao, Mr. Kefas Mukuka, stand up, and please give them a big hand as well. Praise the Lord. Thank you so much. And to all of you, I honor you. I respect you for coming out on Africa Freedom Day. Let's get to work. Because of time, those of you that have not introduced the choir from Kitwe, I salute you. Thank you so much for coming all the way. And please give the Lord a hand for, for the choir. Excellent work. Madam Militu, thank you so much for leading the choir and Chris Chipasha for all your efforts. And everybody that is here, I can't go through all the names. I know that my dear brother Chibesamfuni is here with his pastor. Where is Chibesamfuni? We come a long way from the Copper Belt. There they are with his dear pastor. God bless you. God bless you, sir. Thank you for coming. Is that uh, Reverend Chifita? No? Yeah. Why don't you give the Lord a hand for Reverend Chifita there? Thank you. We want to welcome also our audience that has joined us uh, via my Facebook page, which has gone live. They are listening to us from around the world. We welcome them to this program, and we believe that the Lord is going to touch you regardless of how far away you are. There is no distance with God. We believe he's going to touch you. We also welcome the audience on Revelation TV that are watching us live tonight. We welcome you to this program and all those that have joined us from around the world, thank you for being with us here in Lusaka, Zambia. Are we ready for the word of God? I didn't hear you. Are we ready for the word of God? I want you, if you have your Bibles tonight on this special day, the Africa Freedom Day, give me a few moments without moving as I endeavor to break the bread of life. Turn with me, if you have your Bibles, please, to the book of Proverbs. That's where my assignment for tonight is. The book of Proverbs, chapter number 29. And I'm going to read only one verse of Scripture. And I want you to turn there with me. Somebody shout amen. Somebody shout amen. amen. The book of Proverbs, chapter 29. I'm now reading from verse 2 for tonight. When the righteous are in authority, the people rejoice. But when the wicked beareth rule, the people mourn. Ah. Uh, I said the other day that if this scripture is true, if God means what's in this scripture, then we have issues to deal with. This is critical on this Africa Freedom Day. I speak to Africa tonight, and by way of speaking to Africa, I speak to my own nation and the nations on this continent. I carry a burden that I wish to offload tonight. When the righteous rule, people rejoice. But when wicked people bear rule, people mourn. 
Now, I am reading from the Bible. This is not from the Nevers Mumbas book, which I wrote last month. This is the Bible. And I want to go with you tonight, step by step, as I teach on this subject, on this extremely significant day on which to share this thought. I want to speak to you tonight on a message that I've entitled, in a way, simply as the leader. The leader. Utungulushi. Intungulushi. The leader. I'll be wrong if I don't start by making a few statements before I move into ministry. The leader, whether it is in a home, it's in a church, or it's in a nation, is fully responsible for the end result of that entity. The leader of a home, if the home is broken down, things are not going well, would like to pass the back, blame somebody else, blame our neighbor, blame other people that did not give us the check at the right time. But at the, the right thing to say is that the leader is a critical asset to the outcome of life. We have to take this seriously. So I'm talking about the leader. The leader in our home. The leader in our churches. The leader in our nations. If we are careless on how we evolve and come up with leadership, then we create a, a crisis that makes either your home, your church, or your nation keep back going backwards, getting poorer, getting more confused, and more divided until you agree with God. Until you agree with God, there is no justification for allowing a wicked person to preside over your affairs. There's a problem here tonight, and allow me to preach a little bit. There's a problem, and this is not a political message, it's straight from the Bible. When the wicked rule, people mourn. I want to talk about four little words in this verse, just to explain them a little bit for some of you that may wish some biblical interpretation. And please listen to me, everybody, because this is going to be brief, because we have to pray after this. The Bible says, I want to talk about four little words in that verse of scripture. Number one, it's the word righteous. Who is the righteous? Because the Bible says, for we have all sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. So where are we going to get the righteous to rule? Since we were all born and shepherd in iniquity, as the Bible teaches us. God, where are we going to get the righteous for this country, for Africa? Because it does not matter how many reforms we make in Africa. If we don't solve this problem of the leader, we'll be going backwards. And I want to address it tonight head on because we cannot keep going around and think things will change when we are not dealing with what God thinks is important. Righteousness simply comes from the word right standing. Right, right standing, probably, let me say, with God. But also right standing within your community. Every community has its norms and its culture. And if you are able to pass the benefit, or rather the ways of governing yourself in that culture, and your right standing, and right standing in the presence of God, it becomes right justness. So God is looking for the righteous. But if you decide to use politics and ignore what the Bible says and go for the wicked, and the, good, the interesting thing about the wicked is that you don't even have to vote for them. You just have to be lazy and the wicked shall become. They don't really have a problem as long as the church is sleeping. The wicked are up. The day the church wakes up, the wicked are in trouble. And 
The church in this country is waking up in the name of Jesus. The church on this continent is waking up. I don't care how much you respect your father, but if you, all he does is drink, and whenever he's paid, he drinks all the money, doesn't give it to your mother, you will not get educated. It doesn't matter how much you love him or how handsome he is because the Bible says when the wicked rule, people mourn. You shall mourn. So the meaning of right, righteousness is right standing with God. And God is saying, give me the righteous. Then you don't have to be always praying about things that you pray about because out of a righteous heart, justice shall come. Opportunities shall open up. Fairness shall come. And freedoms shall be available. God is demanding that if we have called ourselves as a Christian nation, maybe let's listen to what God is saying tonight. Let's give him a little bit of time. Maybe our problems are going to be resolved through what we are reading tonight. Are you with me tonight? The other word in that verse is the word rejoice. Now, God wants Zambia to rejoice. God wants Africa to rejoice. Rejoicing means, it doesn't mean that you become rich and you have got all the money in your pocket. You rejoice when the society within which you live accepts you and gives you freedom to attain your highest dreams. To rejoice means that you, you don't have to belong to a ruling party. To get a contract at the Ministry of Health. You rejoice because the country is open to you because of the righteous. Oh, I know you're going quiet on me now. To rejoice is because you can go into any office regardless of your tribe. And place a demand on your rights in this nation and get it. You may not even get it but just the fact that you can. The Americans call it the American dream. Where a black man by the name of Barack Obama would come from the wo woods of Atlanta, Georgia and say, I'm going to give it a shot to run for the presidency of the United States. Nothing stopped him because the society is open for anybody. But African countries, we talk about freedom today. We are killing ourselves by hindering the freedoms, if the people are not free, they are not innovative and the countries will not develop. Nations only develop by a free people. People who can think outside the box. And I'm saying Zambia shall be saved. And that's why I'm saying the devil is in trouble tonight. He has held this country captive. And I'm going to let him, let him know that he's no longer in charge. Rejoicing means that you wake up in the morning, you may not have money in your pocket, but you know that you belong to a country where the leader will not wake up one day and just punish you because he can. Rejoicing means that you can go anywhere in this country without being segregated against on the basis of race, gender, or even your religious affiliation. The other word that is there that I want to talk about is the word wicked. Now, some of you don't understand when the Bible says when the wicked rule. Wicked means wicked. No, 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 no. Serious, let me talk to you tonight. Don't, don't rush me here tonight because I, I waited for a long time to preach what I'm preaching tonight. So don't rush me. Wicked is a person who wakes up in the morning thinking of ways to fix his neighbor. His mind is always to get ahead and be able to take advantage of others, to harm them, to disadvantage them, to make sure that they don't have a leg up. He's wicked. He only thinks, skimming. He's wicked. He's wicked. He, I'm on a chupochlenda winonalachona or a shanich. 
wicked, wicked, wicked. And the Lord is saying, when the wicked bear rule, you will mourn. Because they do nothing but scheme wickedness. Wicked, a wicked man is not a person who comes today and commits sin. Maybe by accident or pressure he commits sin. That's not a wicked man. That's a man who has committed a sin. A wicked man is wicked. That, <laughs> that's his nature. And you must understand, wicked people have a way of enticing you. Wicked people have a way of doing one or two good things. Everybody claps. Every good thing a wicked man does, he's got an end string. Just when you're happy now, and they make sure you're happy, a wicked man has gone ahead of you and set a trap for you. He's wicked. Wicked. And this country, moving forward, shall not host wicked rulers. We have to deal with this. We can't just leave it. We got to deal with it. But Dr. Mumba, how do you do that? Just wait. The devil is a liar. Time has come for us to put a stop. For greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. The devil is a liar. Zambia shall be saved. But we must deal with the issue of the leader. And here I'm not talking about the leader of our country, President Lungu, this position of presidency roles. I'm talking about the former presidents of this country, the current president of this country, and those of us that want to be president. It's for all of us. In politics, they like to reduce great truth to small thinking. Oh, Dr. Mumba was talking about the leader of our country. No, I'm talking about the leader in our home, in the church, in the nation, and Africa needs leadership. Otherwise, Africa will continue to be a second fiddle to the rest of the world. Not on my watch. Not on our watch. We are fearfully and wonderfully made. Oh, for some time we may look like we are losing out. But I want you to know that this season that is coming, it's a totally different season. Those who rejoiced in evil, their days are numbered. Zambia shall be saved. Somebody shout hallelujah. And the Bible says the fourth word is mourn. When the wicked rule, people mourn. Mourning is more of a depressed heart. Because something is not working out. So you start to mourn. Now allow me because I made a promise on Facebook yesterday. Now I'll talk about this a little bit. My wife warned me yesterday, she said, never tomorrow when you preach, don't chase any rabbits. Now, I'm not going to chase any rabbits, Florence, but this one rabbit, this, this rabbit is moving from radio station to radio station. It's moving from television to television. So let me chase this rabbit. A few days ago, the Minister of Information made a statement. She said that the Zambian women have been identified by a UN body as the biggest bashers of drink, as number one. I'm not saying that there is evidence that I can say yes it is, but I want to address myself to that as I talk about the leader. For our home, for our church, and for our nation. Help me preach, Lord. Our women are no different from any other women around the world. So don't you stand there and start to condemn our women if it is true that they are hard on the bottle. It's not the first time Zambia has confronted this. In the 60s, Kenneth Kaunda almost resigned when he said, I cannot be a president of drunkards. They had to plead with him to stay as president. So Zambia has been here before. 
But now it's moved from just general Zambians to our beautiful sisters, cousins, and wives, and aunties. Now they're going out all the way to belt it out. Those of you that were, I was listening to radio, people were laughing at these women. They should stop and condemn them and say, as Zambia shall be saved, as a man called of God, I never attack an issue from the offshoot, from the outcome. I want to go to the root problem. Why are our women, if it is true, hanging on to the bottom? There are several reasons, and I'll be quick tonight because I don't have the time. Why are they hanging to the bottle? There are many issues. Issue number one. Ladies and gentlemen, you must know that a lot of families, especially in Zambia, Lusaka to say, used to live extremely well some time ago. Before I come to another point, which I know you're waiting for, but I'm not going to satisfy it. I can see it on your face. You are not going to tell me what to preach. I'm going to say what I want to say. I can see it on your face. I know what you want me to say. <laughs> we have a situation where there's a breakdown in the economy. A breakdown in living where you remember those days, wives, when your husband would come back from work and, and give you maybe 70% of the salary so that you can buy food and buy some some. I brought makeup stuff. That doesn't happen anymore. The economy is confused. If your husband gives you something, it's not enough to even go throughout the month. And some husbands can't do anything because they have no jobs. And those who have jobs get peanuts. And they get those peanuts after three months or four. It's a paralyzed economic situation. There's depression in the nation. And the heart and the woman is the one who stands by the gate of impossibilities to ensure that those children go to school, to ensure that there's food on the table, to ensure that that man looking for a job for 16 years has something to eat. She deals with it. She has to deal with it every morning. Something happens to her heart. Breaks. She gets overwhelmed. The Bible says in the book of Proverbs chapter number 31 and verse 6, maybe that will help us to understand. The Bible says in verse number 6, verse 5, It is not for kings to drink wine, nor for princes strong drink, lest they drink and forget the law and pervert justice of any of the afflicted. Give strong drink unto him that is ready to perish. A lot of these women feel like they're going to perish. These bills will never be paid. If I perish, I perish. But the Bible says give them wine who are ready to perish. And wine unto those that be of heavy hearts. How can God say that? Let him drink and forget his poverty. And remember his misery no more. If our women are drinking, it's because they have come to some crossroads where help is not coming along. And they want to forget about their miseries a little just for a night. Go out there with their friends and dance it out because their hearts are heavy. And if they stay there, they're going to kill themselves. So the leader must ensure that we bring the economy back on track so that their husbands can get back to work and they shall come back home. That's point number one. Point number two. To be a leader is not only to rule or to govern. When you are a leader, you become a model on catwalk. In order for people and the followers to see you and imitate you. People are amused by those who lead them. You don't have to say anything to them to teach them. They watch you. That's why during the Kenneth Kaunda days, 
A lot of us, my father wanted me to be a teacher. He was a little bit upset that I chose to preach. Because I told him, but that's also teaching dad. So it took a long time to convince him. But because during that time to be a teacher was a real hit. Because the president was a teacher. Schools were started all over this country because the president was a teacher. The universities of Zambia, Kitwe, and Lusaka were established because the president was a teacher. Everybody was getting educated and like Dr. Inonga told us that when Mozambique got free, they didn't have graduates. We had to export Zambian educated people to help the civil service in Namibia, in Botswana, and in Mozambique. Because Kaunda was a teacher, and everybody wanted education because the president is a teacher. He didn't have to teach it. No, no, no. He just needed to model, and everybody is watching. I'm not going where you want me to go. Frederick Chiluba, a unionist. Those are the days of the Hikaumbas when they spoke. The unions were strong and nobody, no Chinese, could mess with the workers. No, no, no. The unions were vibrant. We have one who was the president of Zufiao sitting here. President Chiluba empowered the unions. To speak out. All of a sudden they said our brother is in state house. We're going to fight this thing out. No Chinese will tell them what to do. Because they understood that they were in charge. And they modeled after Chiluba. Everybody during those days, if you remember, they changed their accents to speak like Frederick. We do recognize. That this is democracy. <laughs> Even people in Chawama were speaking American. We do recognize that this is democracy. Because John Locke, he started talking about John Locke and, and all these uh, people because he, he was who he was. He brought a little culture with a rug in the pocket that now everybody, including those who had no jackets, had to find handkerchiefs and just put them somewhere because it's a new culture. How many of you know what I'm talking about? To be the leader means that you have to be aware that you are being watched. So the country becomes after you. That's wrong English, but I am entitled as an evangelist to use it. The country follows the state. The footsteps that Dr. Inongo was talking about follows the footsteps. Ronald Bonke tells a story of a young man who was left home by his father and said, don't leave the house. I'll be right back. I'm going to the hospital to see someone. After a long time, father was not coming back. So the boy decided to go where the father was and it was raining. And the only way he could know where the father was was to look at the steps in the rain and put his own steps in the steps because he didn't know where his father had gone. But at least he could see the steps in the rain of his father. And he put his foot there, another foot there. And before long, he found himself in front of a bar. And the father was having it out with the Susies. And the son thought he had gone to the hospital. When the father saw the son, he said, what? How did you know I was here? He said, dad, it was easy. I just followed your footsteps. <laughs> I want to talk to you leaders that are here tonight. You want to become leaders? Watch your footsteps. Watch where they lead. Because somebody is following those footsteps. Zambia has a tendency of admiring its leaders. Levi Patrick Manawasa came on the scene, 
a lawyer of lawyers. Everybody wanted to study law. Have you seen how many lawyers we have in Zambia today? We have more lawyers that they, than the courts can handle because of levy. Everybody felt the president is a lawyer. I'm going to be a lawyer. Went out there and, and now there are so many schools of law in this country. My wife was telling me the other day, you better go and study law. With all the experience I have, I can represent quite a few of you. <laughs> Brother GBM, we can represent a few of these brothers. So law was prevalent everywhere. Then came Rupia Bezanibanda, the businessman diplomat. Wherever, president for all people, wherever he went, ShopRite was coming in, investing in this country. Business investments. For, I was ambassador under him. I've never seen such excitement about investing in Zambia as when Rupia was in government. Why? Because he was a businessman and a diplomat. I was on the table when we struck the deal for Lumwana, which was $8 billion. It happened in my office as high commissioner. The highest investment in the mining industry in a long time on the continent. It happened as I was high commissioner. I signed those papers. But the excitement was Zambia is great. Everybody's going there. Why? Because number one, he is the serving, longest serving diplomat in this country. And he knows how to relate to other countries. Secondly, he knows business. So all these Manda Hills and all these things you are saying, he was busy opening them one after the other. And now all of us want to strike a deal because Bwezani taught us that you've got to use your wisdom and don't depend on public money. You go and you do your own business. We followed him. He didn't teach us. We watched him. Can I proceed tonight? After Bwezan Banda came Mr. Michael Chilufiasati. A man of his own. Cobra. I want to I wanna say two things about him that he brought. For the first time, the policeman in Zambia became an issue. All of a sudden, policemen felt power because he had been a policeman. You don't play with a policeman during those days. They just beat us. They, 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 GBM. They just beat us. They were, not, they were not even following any code because even if I reported, the man there was one of them. So they think he's going to protect them. They went amok beating us. Now, those of you that were never beaten by them, you don't know what I'm talking about. Me, I was beaten. Mr. Sata and I were always talking at each other. May he so rest in peace. I miss him now. But not only that, but Michael Sata also, because he was a grassroots person, he brought everybody into politics. Doesn't matter whether he has been to school, as long as he can campaign well, he becomes a minister of forward movements. Why? Because he attracted a crowd that would have never had a chance in their lifetime to govern this country. But because he was one of them, as he used to say, he made them hold positions that some of them had no clue what was going to happen in the office. Africa from office, no mamuna bande chile bamdala. So, but P S kuchita shan mo shan. Indala ma balanda mo ari kwaza shan mo ebu take over. But but who la shan? They have no clue why they are there. And Michael did not tell them to behave like that. They just watched Michael. It was in his blood. You know what? After Michael, we had President Lungu. And I want to say this, that it is important for us to know the principle that I'm talking about. 
The principle is that President Lungu now, we are watching him. And I've noticed already that the color blue of suits without ties is coming on the scene. In fact, one thing I forgot about Kenneth Kaunda was the Kaunda suits. We all wore Kaunda suits because we were watching Kaunda. And then President Lungu also has brought his shirts open like Kaunda, a little bit different, a little bit more modern. But I want to say to this government, we commend you for that bill you want to bring concerning alcoholism. But that would not change the drinking trade. Nobody has ever stopped drinking because there's a legislation. No, legislation, drink, 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 they'll drink. Whether you write laws, they'll drink because it has nothing to do with the law. If you tell them we'll close the bars, they'll find and make their own bars. They'll drink. There are two things I challenge this government. Never should the president or a cabinet minister, member of parliament, or councillor in power elected by men find himself in a compromised position of abuse of alcohol. Because when a president, when a minister, when a member of parliament abuses alcohol publicly, the young Zambians watch and that's all they do. Do you want the women to stop drinking in the manner they are drinking? If you drink and you are a president or you're a minister or you're a member of parliament, do it discreetly. Not in, a, in your home. Don't do it where because the Bible says a king should not take wine because it's a mocker. You didn't pray about you. Am I talking to somebody tonight? The leader that we put in place at home in the church. Now let me talk to the church. Pastors, let me address the Pentecostal movement. The church and politics are the two avenues where we don't respect preparation of those that are going to take care of God's people. People have never... He campaigned well. I appoint him minister for foreign affairs. From Mulakupikwa. And he's a minister. Now he has to stand shoulder to shoulder with Pompey, the Secretary of State of the United States. You can't even write your name. But because you campaigned well, you are the Minister of Foreign Affairs. That's how Africa is being destroyed. Ah, don't look at me that way because I'm talking about what is happening. And we, this is Africa Freedom Day. How can we be free? When we don't respect who is out there. That's why I'm saying pastors, even you. I found a young pastor, you know, full of the Holy Ghost, saying, my pastor, I'm a pastor as well. I said, how long? He said, I've been a pastor for a few years, Pastor Mumba. I said, where did you go to Bible college? He said, I didn't go nowhere. Just anointed by God. Now, let me tell you what. Let me tell you Pentecostals. Let me tell you something. Can you imagine yourself going to a hospital to be operated on because they are suspecting a cancer in your stomach? And some man called Dr. So-and-so comes into that place in the theater, puts on the gloves and the little heart and gets a blade to start to cut your stomach. Then you say, excuse me, uh, what is your name? He said, I'm Dr. Chama. Dr. Chama, where did you go to school to learn Things to do with operations and being a doctor. He said, no, 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 I haven't been anywhere. I just have an interest. 
I want, I want, I want to tell you what's going to happen. Mephisotophia operation, you run out of the operation table. Why? Because you don't want nobody not trained to touch your body. Why do you, young pastor, want to subject all those people to your ignorance? Get some education. Even in the Bible, you, you hear that he sat at the feet of Gamaliel. He sat at the feet of Paul. You sit at the feet of somebody and learn. You can't just say I'm anointed. We are destroying the name of the Pentecostal and charismatic movement. In April this year, President of Rwanda, Kagame, shut down 600 Pentecostal churches. 6,000 churches. They rose up against it that God will judge you. He said, God is not going to judge me because God is a God of order. You are meeting 1,000 people in a classroom with one toilet. When I ask you for your qualification, you say, I'm just anointed. Are you going to accept a minister of finance who just anointed? Why do we lower the standards in the kingdom? This is many years later, Pentecostals. We should be as educated, if not more, than those that are out there. That's why we gave the award to Dr. Inonge. Why? Because she loves God, but she got them degrees, baby. She's not playing around. She's got them. When she stands in Washington, they may say, but you're a Christian. She says, show me what you got. And they show her a certificate in economics. She pulls out her degree and said, uh, here is my degree. Karabari yalabandaraba, shataraba. Ignorance is not holiness. Ignorance is not spirituality. Make sure you prepare yourself before you stand before God's people to offload. There's still time. He shut 6,000 churches. And unfortunately, when I read his case and his argument, he was right. His job as president is to protect the health of the citizens. How can 1,000 people use one toilet in a small classroom? And he said, once you sort that problem out and show me your little certificates that you know what you're teaching. Now you say, but no, 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 me, I would rather get educated and be anointed. I would rather have both. So that the time they are removing some pastors who have nothing, I still, that test, I'll pass. I'll still remain pastoring. Because when they ask for a paper, I show them. Because this is the world we live in. Just like you can never get a job at Ministry of Health without a paper. You should not get one trying to look after God's people. You can be a brother in Christ as a member of a small fellowship where you're just drinking tea. But don't you stand there and start a Bible college. The Bible, let me not go there, that's too much stuff. So, it brings me to a little story and I'm going to start to wind out because time is not with me. We're talking about the leader. It brings me to a story that has been told of a lunatic a lunatic who every morning had to mop the floor of his house because there was water on the floor. And when he comes back from where he goes in the evening, the water would be back and he would mop it. He was a lunatic, remember. Day after day, week after week, month after month, this lunatic bought different shapes of mops to mop the water just as he leaves the house until he started to get very satisfied with himself that he was a hard worker. Nobody can mop like me, he told his friends. But when he came back in the evening, the water was in the house. 
So he had to use different mops. And he was boasting, I found a mop which just takes five minutes. He rejoices in the success of the size of the mop. Until a friend came to visit this lunatic and found his schedule of morning and evening, mopping, evening, morning, mopping. He said, why do you do that? He said, because of the water. So the friend said, this water must be coming from somewhere. If we can find the source and shut it down, you don't have to mop twice. And I'll help you mop the house. Then he said, because he's a lunatic, he said, no, 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 no. I don't have any problem with the source. The problem is the water. Me, I want the water out. Lunatic. So he mopped water morning, evening, morning, evening, until the friend said, you know what? I'm not going to have any of this. He looked somewhere and he saw there was a tap that was leaking the whole time. There was a tap that was running. He said, you see that there? He said, yeah. He said, that's the source of your problem. The lunatic says, no, I have no problem with the tap. I have a problem with the water. And I have to get it out. Until by force, he goes and shuts off the water. And helped him mop the floor for the last time. Africa, we need to deal with our lunacy. Tired of mopping the waters of corruption. Mopping the waters of greed. Mopping the waters of conflict. Mopping the waters of hatred and bitterness. I'm tired of mopping. I want to look to the source of this problem. The source of is in the word of God when the Bible says, when the righteous rule, people rejoice. But when the wicked are in charge, people mourn. You want to stop mourning as you mop, go to the top and shut it off. <laughs> Africa, do you want to be free? Do you want us to compete with Europe? Do you want us to compete with America? Deal with the leaking top. Stop bringing reform after reform, broom after broom, mop after mop. Because the next president, if he doesn't belong to the first group, will do the same thing the last president was doing. I want to challenge you today. The problem of Africa lies in shutting off that tap. That's why I'm saying even this law that is going to come about alcoholism, you can write it as well as you want, but somebody needs to go to the source and shut it. Shut it. Then alcoholism will dry up. Hope will come back to the ladies. And they want to live with hope. Somebody shout amen. amen. But that's on the righteous. That I'm talking about tonight. But I also want to talk about the system. I have talked about the righteous. That what God says is going to save Africa. Is to make up your mind. That we need righteous people. It can't be compromised on. It's in the word. And even if I were to die tomorrow. I want my wife, my children, my pastors. That I have trained to preach this message. It's the righteous that God is talking about. If my people who are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray, seek my face and turn away from the wicked, then I shall hear them from heaven and heal their land. My people. We've got to get involved. But you know, the problem is not just the righteous. It's also the system that is in place. When I was in Bible college in Dallas, God told me to come back to Zambia and disciple my nation. In other words, Zambia had its own culture. Jerusalem was anti-Christ. And 
Peter and all of the other apostles were trying to Christianize Jerusalem. And the Bible says they were arrested, thrown into jail because the owners of Jerusalem said, you are messing up our culture. You want to accuse us that we killed this Christ. Now, everybody, please look at Brother Nevers. I'm going to land in a few minutes. This is Africa Freedom Day. There was a culture in Jerusalem. So when Peter began to preach Christ and him crucified and that he rose from the dead, the leaders that be rose up against them because they were messing with the status quo. When you mess with the status quo, you go to jail. Yeah. My wife is saying, Wembesh, yes. You may, if you disturb the powers that be by bringing another culture, you go ch to Chimbokayo. That's what happened to Peter. They started to preach that this Jesus will change Jerusalem. And you know what? Acts 5. There's a scripture in the book of Acts. Acts number 5 verse 28. Where they were told that you have filled Jerusalem with a doctrine of saying that we are the ones who killed Christ and he rose again. Stop that. Zambia, the, let me just be specific on politics now. Because some of you don't know why I'm in politics. And I am here to stay until Zambia is saved. So these prayers you make are not the ones that we are discussing tonight. Pray for the wicked. Don't pray for the righteous. This is the only country where believers spend hours praying for the righteous. Lord God, remove the righteous from the place of power. And fill those holes with the wicked. Then they start to bind the leaders. You can't have your cake and eat it. It's either you want the righteous or you want the wicked. There are only two. Ah, it's quiet now. I like it this way. Because Zambia is getting saved. I'm going to pray in a few minutes. But I want you to know that they got them. Anybody in this country who stands up and challenges the status quo, if he doesn't end up in court or in the cells, he's going to be in jail. Why? Because you're trying to change what they have agreed on. That's how they live. If you change the structure of the governance system, how are they going to eat when I was appointed vice president, this is the mistake I made, and I've said this before. I went there to the vice presidency thinking everybody wants to deal with corruption. I said, from now on, I want my two PSs to meet with me every week to make sure not a single kwacha is missing. Uh -uh. The word went like a wildfire in all ministries. We must now start to report. You know why? Because the system is theirs. Christians, you abandoned politics many years ago. So they remained with it and created a railroad that only they can travel. So when a Christian becomes, by accident or by God's design, his wheels are the church members who rise up against you. China, our pastor, Maliwa Shia Chibuku, man of God, Maliwa Shia Chibuku, Kabiri Nomba, let God just give you victory. Yo, Kabiri Nao Shiba, Pakuina, Pangata Shia Chibuku, whatever, but PF, Nangba, MMT, Venava, Shia Chibuku. It's on pressure. It's pressure. So, how do we do this thing? We have to dismantle the system. It's the dismantling that is costly. They said you have filled Jerusalem with a doctrine. I want to say that Never Smumba and the others, we are filling Zambia with a doctrine. And the doctrine is when the righteous rule, people rejoice. That's the doctrine I'm teaching. You may say not to it tomorrow or today, but it will not change the world. Zambians, Africa, we're in a situation where we're expecting honey from a dry tree. 
we hope that something good will come from a man who does not even think about God. Having said that, I want to close. I've talked about the righteous. I've talked about the system that must be changed. In the process of wanting to change the system, listen, if you think you're a world changer and you are not in trouble most of the time, you are not changing anything. I just, just want to help you. In a one several in time when I could jail and shy a cop on a fiat. Oh, shy a cock jail in a bad in time. I won't say, you know why? Because probably there's nothing you are interfering with. Power, like Chiluba said, is sweet. So when you come making contrary statements, could you have a kele mumaka? You Shut it down. Deal with him. I'm not the first politician to go to jail. We are not the first politicians to go to jail. All of Africa, we are in jail. As politicians in the opposition, we are in jail. Even the ones in power now were in jail yesterday. What we need to do today is to bring the righteous who realize that if somebody is Tonga, is Lozi, is Bemba, is Kalubale, they are all Zambians who can contribute to the better good of our country. That's the righteousness we are looking for. Dialogue. Why is dialogue a problem? It's a problem because the tap is running. You are mopping with the dialogue. Even if they dialogue, they will kill each other when they get out. It's not dialogue. We need to turn off the tap when the righteous rule. People rejoice. When the wicked rule, people mourn. I'm not saying that. It's in the book. I can't change it. Zambians can't change it. And Zambia has made a, a claim that we're a Christian nation. But here is what has happened to us. Zambia and Africa are under a spell. And I want to break that by the power of a spell is like hypnotism. Let me tell you this, please. Everybody look at me for a few minutes. Now, I have to make this confession. And I don't want you to use it against me. But when I went to Hillcrest Secondary School, I was doing something that nobody taught me. And I don't know where it came from. Maybe that's where the gift of miracles and healing came from. I didn't even know anything about hypnotism. But you know, I was sitting with my friend, I read a book, and I took one of my friends in a corner, and I said, you know what, I'm going to make you sleep. He said, well, I pain are you? And I said, yeah. I said, all you do is listen to me. Fix your eyes on me. So he fixed his eyes on me. I said, very soon you'll be sleeping deeply. Very deeply. He laughed. He said, you are. Now, by that, no, you'll be sleeping deeply. Now, change an issue. Now, you are starting to sleep. <laughs> deeply. And he was looking at me like, <laughs> I said, you are fast asleep. And his eyes were closed. And he was asleep. My friends were with me. Now, I took a divider. How many of you remember dividers where we used to? It has one sharp point. I did this and pricked him from here. It came out the other way. He was still sleeping deeply. He was hypnotized. And then I got a fear of my life. How do I get him out? <laughs> I said... All right, this guy is gone. But how on earth am I going to get him out? I had to go and read somewhere. And then I, I started to say, now you're sleeping lightly. He seemed sleeping lightly. You're coming back until I brought him back. Now, what did I learn from that? I don't do that anymore now. If I want you to sleep, I just say, in Jesus' name, and you sleep. I no longer say you're sleeping deeply because I don't want to go that way. I don't know what that was. But... I've done my scientific study on that. It's a different subject. I don't do it anymore, Pastor George. Don't you start praying for me right now. I can see that in your face. 
Africa and Zambia is hypnotized. How do you explain us voting in the manner that Africa votes? The same people who kill you, tomorrow you vote for them. Unless there's hypnotism. And I want to say this in closing. People who ascend to power depend on spirits. I didn't realize this until I got into politics. How useful which doctors, not for me, become before the election. I want to number suit number time. Then I've come up with Shinganga, Namano Momenso, Nafu Kamana time. I didn't want to have a film Dalep Yala in the election. Fiance from Lefa and Alam Pera. They consult mediums. Because power is about spirit. Don't be cheated. If you don't have Jesus, you bow before another God. This is what has happened to Zambia. I heard a story of one of the politicians who went to Malawi to see a witch doctor. I won't mention the name. And the witch doctor told him that in order for you to win the next election, we have to smear you with feces. And put you on an anthill. And as the flies sit on you, it's a sign that Zambians will be voting in masses. And it worked. And it worked. Why? Because leadership is about spirit. It's principalities. So in order to break this spell that Zambians are just voting without knowing why they're voting, somebody has to break that spell so that they can wake up. As a young man, my brother is here. We lived in, in a D.C. My father was a district sec secretary and we lived in a house which was left by a white man called Langam. A big house from Chilisali. And one day I heard a noise through the window of a squeaking rat. I said, where is that? I looked through the window. I saw a rat frozen going like this. I wondered, why is it squeaking? What's the problem? Why can't it go? Then I looked to the left. I saw a snake slithering its way towards the rat. Had totally hypnotized the rat. The rat was frozen, could not move. And I was there panicking. I said, now that rat is going to be breakfast any minute. What can I do to help? The rat needed outside help. I looked inside the house. There was a white handkerchief on my table. I picked it up and threw it between the snake and the rat. When I threw it between the snake and the rat, the rat woke up from hypnotic condition and took off for its life. Zambia and Africa needs a white handkerchief from somewhere. Somebody has got to come with a greater power to deal with the hypnosis that has kept us poor, that has kept us fighting, that has kept us retrogressive. We need a higher power to break the hypnosis. Ladies and gentlemen, the battle for Zambia is not a physical battle. It's a spiritual battle. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, the Bible says in Ephesians 6, 12. We wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, powers, and the rulers of this world. So if you're fighting darkness and powers, how do you fight it? No, to make a clove. It's not possible. We can only defeat the enemy of Zambia by using the same power, equivalent power and more power to get Zambia back. The battle for Zambia is not a human to human battle, Brother Jibir. The battle for Zambia is a battle of gods. Valesa. If we are just used but only gods can fight for Zambia. First Samuel 17, you see Goliath coming now, seeing the young David coming to him with a little stone in a sling. 
He got mad. He said, who do you think I am, you Israelites, that you send this little insignificant thing to embarrass me? I'm going to kill you, young man, and throw your body to the birds of the air. Listen, then Goliath, listen to this, church, cursed David by his gods. The Philistines, go, he didn't say I'm going to kill. David was small, but he didn't want to take any chances. He had to invoke the Philistine gods to fight for him. But David was not a smooth little boy. He, he read the battle. He said, I cannot fight it. So he said, you come to me with shields and swords. But I come to you in the name of the God of Israel. You know what David did? David now drew the battle line. It's no longer I that live, but Christ that liveth in me. The battle is not my battle, but it belongs to God. I shall fight the battle for you. Be still and know that I am God. He steps aside. And the gods of the Philistines begin to fight with the God of Israel. Because you can't fight it. You can't fight it. So how can a Kali worker not kill a giant? Except the gods had manipulated the impact. This country has been declared a Christian nation. If we are going to win that the righteous become useful in this nation, we have to confront the spirits that have been called on this country, that have divided us, that have made us poor, that have made us second class citizens. And that is why I believe Zambia will be a number one country on the continent. It will be an example of nations. But in order to get there, in order to get there, we have to get a stronger power to defeat the powers that have controlled us all these years. When I say Zambia shall be saved, that's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for who you are. This is your nation. This is your continent. As we celebrate Africa Freedom Day, we are not free until we allow the power of the Spirit to break the chains that bind us as a people. I will ask you to stand to your feet, all of you. Lift your hands to God. I want the pastors to come here. And just stand in front and stretch your hands toward these people. We're going to pray for Zambia. Pastor Kunda, Apostle, come on on, Sydney. Come on on, Memphis. I want you to line up right here. I want us to do something. At the beginning of this ministry, I said, God told me this week that God is going to hear us. Yes. Dr. Inonga, you are not just an uh, awarded person. You are a, an evangelist. Come to the front. Mrs. Bumba, come. You got the same qualification that I got from Bible school. So you come. I want us to... After we minister for so long, you know what happens to us, Pastor? We think we are just doing an exercise when we pray. Today, because of what I'm telling you, whatever you say there, it's, it's touching the heavens and activating some power to break the forces of darkness. I'm going to pray this prayer, and I want you, all I want you to do to support me is to raise your hands and stretch them as we pray and bring down strongholds. Father, you've said that we do not fight against flesh and blood, but against principalities, powers, and the rulers of this world. Father, we thank you that we don't come in our own power, but we come in the name of Jesus, the Savior of the world, the one who came and died that we could be free. Lord, you are raising the leader in our homes. You are raising the leader in our churches. You are raising the leader in our nation. And you are raising the leader on our continent. And therefore, Lord, come against the powers of Satan that have started to fight against Zambia, making dialogue impossible. We break that chain right now. We break that chain and that fetter right now. We release Zambia. To become the nation that God has always wanted it to be. 
We pray for peace and unity in this country. May Zambia rise and be the country that it was meant to be. Everybody just pray in the spirit for a few moments. Just thank God for a few moments because he's here. He's here listening to us breaking the chains and the fetters tonight. Breaking the chains and the fetters tonight. We are breaking the fetters tonight. Zambia shall be saved. Zambia shall be saved. The devil is a liar. You are not going to take this country in that direction. In the holy name of Jesus. Keep praying, keep praying, keep praying. Ministers, break the fetters, the chains. Break them, break them, break them. Break them. Thank you. Shh. Father, there are people that have knelt before witches to receive power to deceive people. We have power more than them. We use that power. We come against them in the name of Jesus. In the righteousness of God, we take a stand for Zambia. We decree peace, unity, prosperity, and a doorway for the righteous to be brave. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Listen, just for a few minutes while the ministers are still here, your eyes are wide open. I'm going to ask a question. Is there anyone in the congregation? You say, Brother Nevers, pray for me. I want Jesus to change my life. Because Zambia can be changed, but if my life is not changed, I'll not enjoy what is about to happen in this country. You want me to pray for you, come to the front. Come right now. Give the Lord a big hand as they come. God bless you. Just keep coming. Wherever you are, I want to pray for you right here. You keep coming. Give the Lord a big hand. There she comes. Anybody else? You want God to change your life? Just come. Just come. I want to pray for you tonight. There they come. Give the Lord a big hand of praise. Give the Lord a big hand of praise. There they come. You say, I want Jesus. Nobody leaves, please. Just for a few moments, we're going to be through with this. Help me, please. Nobody moves. This is a holy moment. Give me a few more. Please stand this way. Face me. 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 When you come to the front to receive Jesus, face me. Face me. Give the Lord another hand. They're still coming. They're still coming. There they come. You say, I want Jesus to change my life. Because if Zambia is going to be saved, then you need to get saved. Anybody else? You want me to pray for you tonight? Those of you that have come to the front, welcome into the kingdom of God. I want you to raise your hands, close your eyes and pray this prayer after me. Say, Dear Heavenly Father, I realize I'm a sinner, but tonight I receive you into my heart as my Lord and my Savior. Change me, save me, wash me in your precious blood. I am born again, and I thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Faith without works is dead. The ministers here, please, you can take one each and find a way in which to encourage them, and you can actually draw them to your church and let them be members of your church. Give them a big hand and hug them, please. God bless you. Just remain there. Just remain there. Ministers, please come and talk to these. Ashers, where are you? Come quickly, please. Come quickly, please. Come quickly, please. Come quickly, please. I want all these that have come to the front to meet someone. There are two others here. Minister, there are two others here. They need somebody to help them. God bless you. Yes, Sydney, take one. Yeah. Well, hallelujah. Give the Lord a hand. Isn't this wonderful tonight? You know what? I really want to propose that you take this message, if you can buy it tonight, and listen to it over and over and over. And those of you that have got those forms, where you can put your amount to support us so that the next Zambia shall be saved can be on your shoulders to some extent. 
Uh, but does everyone have that? Are you sure? Do you have these little pieces of paper? Those, can you raise them if you have them? Those who have those papers, you see they don't have them. I would like for you before you leave to just mark on that, give us your details. Don't leave before you leave it at the door, please. We believe that what God wants to do across this country is to liberate this country. But there are also many of them at the door. There are t-shirts and the message I've preached today and the message I preached last time. The power of introduction. May the Lord bless you. I love you. Shalom. Quiet. Well, bless the Lord. Did the choir sing one song and then we'll be getting ready to go. And I pray that you go. May God go before you, protect you. In the name of Jesus, amen. God bless you. Sing as the people go on.